What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. So I'm here today to talk about The Real Housewives of New Jersey, season 13, episode 14, Rat in the Street. So be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and before we get into the episode, I just have to say that over um, this episode and the last episode, we're really seeing a different side to Louie. And again, you know, with old Teresa, Joe, Melissa, Louie bullshit, I've been kind of just like, okay, like, it's what's going on. It's been years in, it's years of drama. It just kind of has some pretty high stakes right now. It's, it's at the breaking point, basically. And, you know, I my, like, I talk about with my stepmom sometimes. She'll be like, oh, who do you think's in the wrong, Teresa or Melissa? And I'm kind of like, because eh, I'm like, it's both of them. You know what I mean? It's Joe, Teresa, Melissa. It's like... No one's in the right, essentially. You know what I mean? Um, so that's why the whole thing just kind of wears me out, essentially. So that's why I don't really, really like, discuss it a whole lot or have it up until now. But I've been kind of just, as I'm kind of thinking about it in the back of my head, and it's like, yes, you know, it's from both sides. But we're really seeing Louie getting his hands dirty, essentially. And it's really just kind of showing, like, Huh, like, I wonder how much of a role Louis is personally playing in this drama. And now, don't get me wrong, Louis is not the cause of the drama. You know what I mean? Like, this drama has been brewing for a minute. It's gone back to Teresa's past marriage. Like, this drama has been there. Like, Teresa going having issues with Melissa, Joe having issues with Teresa's partners. Like, they've had issues. But how is Louis? you know, adding to the mixture in a way that it's come to this point. You know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, I'm not saying that Louis is the only one in the wrong, that he's the cause of this. Everyone's fucking wrong with this. You know what I mean? Like, being realistic. And I will agree that, you know, Teresa and Joe were kind of at a point where it's like, look, you can work this shit out or you could just, you know, go your separate ways, become estranged. Like, you've got to do something. You know what I mean? Like, Let's not act like estrangement doesn't happen sometimes, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, you and Joe may have to just kind of split apart for a few years, do your own thing, and then just kind of work on yourselves and maybe come back together, like, as brother and sister and have form that relationship. But I'm not going to sit here and act like Louis isn't displaying some questionable kind of um, behaviors, you know? He's just very, so he's trying to isolate Teresa from her family, and granted, Maybe Teresa and her brother do need to just kind of go their separate ways. But Teresa and Joe should be the ones that come to that decision. You know what I mean? Lo Louis, oh, like, like, Louis, Louis. Um, Louis was basically like, oh, you know, once we get married, I'm not going to allow this, you know, train wreck to continue anymore. So basically saying, like, I'm going to put my foot down and protect you from the train. It's like, on the one hand, you could see that as admirable, you know what I mean, that Louis is the knight in shining armor rescuing Teresa from this drama, but it's also, like, questionable, I think. Just kind of looking at it from, like, an emotional manipulation, isolation kind of aspect, and um, I'm just giving Louis some massive side-eye. So I just want to prelude with that. Let me know in the comments what you personally think. Again, I think that everyone is wrong in different ways. I don't think... Teresa's right, I don't think Melissa's right, I don't think Joe's right, I don't think Louie's right. And I do think that maybe Teresa and Joe do need to just kind of focus on their own individual families and just maybe put their own, you know, uh, bond on hold for a bit. But I don't, I'm kind of questioning how Louie is going about it. Now, it may be the kind of thing where it's like, look, regardless of how it happens, it has to have happened. So in that kind of, from that stance, it could be like, okay, like, yeah, Louis isn't doing it in the best way, but he's stepping in and getting Teresa to to do what she has to do. But I'm just, I'm not coming from that, pers that perspective, you know what I mean? I think that that's Teresa and Joe's decision to make as your know, siblings. And I, I don't know, do you get what I'm saying? But yeah, I just want to kind of touch on that real quickly. Now let's get into the episode. So we start with Margaret, she's with Marge Sr. And she invited Jen Fessler her mother, and her mother's identical twin sister. Their names are Marilyn and Carolyn, Mazzy and Cassie. They were raised in Brooklyn, and they dress the exact same. They're like 81 years old. They're wearing the same top, same hair color, same hairstyle, 
everything's the same except like the accessories, like their earrings and their handbags and shit. Um, but yeah, so they're kind of a little bit kooky, kind of a little bit um, have an on-screen presence. And we learned that they were like best friends with Barbra Streisand growing up. So it's pretty fucking interesting. They then chit chat a bit about the whole Ireland situation, about Danielle's whole bullshit, how she's being an asshole to Margaret, as she puts it. And then they connect it to um, Teresa's whole situation with her brother and how, you know, she's um, pulling all these antics, you know, with Melissa and Joe while simultaneously crying about like, family, 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 where'd my family go, blah, 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 why don't they support me? I want them all together, and it's like, again, like, what, what's going on? Like, what is your true stance? And Teresa has her own issues about Melissa, but one thing we know for certain is that, you know, Teresa does love her brother a lot. And it may be that she does want to reconcile with him and kind of keep the status quo going, you know, the whole thing where they have some flicks of drama, but they still kind of stick together, like, that kind of thing going on. But then we have Lily on her other side, who's all about, no, this is a toxic situation, this is a fucking snake pit, wanna get you out of it. So that may be why Teresa is so flip-floppy. Because later in the episode, Louis Sharp says, oh, um, I don't even want your brother at our wedding. And then when Joe doesn't go in the next episode, she's gonna be fucking crying and shit. And it's like, well, you know, like, you got what your husband wanted. And you really see that conflict with Teresa, what's going on. So we're really starting to see that in her behavior. She's doing all this bullshit while crying about family, family, family. So it's just really confusing. We then get Dolores and Frank. They're linking up for a little family celebration to celebrate Frankie's getting his like dream job. Um, it's them, their kids, so Gabby and Frankie. And then um, Dolores and Frank's partners are there. So Paul and Brittany. So everyone's all together at the restaurant. Um, it's nice and cute. Frank feels like Polly's still kind of isn't too thrilled about um, Frank being there, essentially, but being in the same room with him. But Frank's hope is that Paul will see the dynamic that they have and then be open to letting continue, basically. Um, everyone's just gushing with the kids' work ethic, kind of praising them. It's really cute. It's a nice little family scene. Um, Frank later says that, you know, it, it really showed him that he's not losing his family, it's just growing and expanding. Because, you know, they, have, they all have their own little thing going on, and it's really cute. Um, Frank gets to know Paul a bit, you know, he learns about, a bit about his sons. I think they're like 17 and like 22. Um, well, he, we learned that he immigrated from Ireland to America when he was 23 years old, um, so it's pretty interesting. And so yeah, Frank feels like they're just like breaking down some boundaries, which is really good, um, not boundaries, Breaking barriers, which is the same thing, but has a different connotation. You know, boundaries could be positive, but barriers are negative. So just the same, same shit, but different connotations. Um, we then get Brittany asking a dumbass question. She asks Paul, like, when you immigrated from Ireland, did you know any English? Or, And they're like, they speak English in Ireland. And I don't, they, they do speak Irish a little bit as well, but English is like the predominant language, you know? Uh, so it's pretty... Uh, did, did she think that they just walk around speaking Irish? Um, that was pretty funny. And then, but yeah, uh, Dolores gushes about the Ireland trip at that point. Paul suggests that they um, host a little event to kind of pay homage to like old Ireland, as he puts it. They sit, and they kind of settle on like a, a prohibition themed party. And someone pointed out like, I'm tired of all these fucking 1920s themed parties. Now we have two more because we have one out of Atlanta as well, the Harlem Knife, which isn't exactly the same, but like in terms of like theme, it's kind of similar, like in the in the style of clothing. Um so yeah, the nineteen twenties parties is leak across all fucking franchises. Frank then asks Paul, Oh, are you thinking about getting engaged to Dolores? Um Paul then says, Oh, I already bought the ring and Frank's like, Oh my gosh, like what? Um, so yeah, but Frank's super happy all in all so that the family is growing and expanding and that they're all, so it's a good little, um, end to that whole storyline. And then, uh, we get Teresa and Louie, they're working out some final wedding details and doing like a, 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 a seating chart. Um, and yeah, she says she's more stressed over the family drama than the wedding. She talks about how supportive and just basically easy Louie's family is. You know, there's no issues, all that stuff. Then she talks about um, the bridal shower. She says that, oh, it was kind of weird with Melissa. It's like, okay, bitch, why don't you tell him why it was weird with Melissa? How you 
completely ignored her existence in your speech, you know, like right in front of her. Basically gave her a big fuck you, but whatever. Teresa then says that Melissa has an RSVP to the rehearsal dinner and she texted her about it and she learned that they're actually not gonna go. So they're skipping out on the rehearsal dinner, the brunch that's gonna go down like the day after the wedding. They're only gonna go to the wedding at this point. And then Teresa says, oh, this is the result of Melissa being in my brother's ear all these years that Melissa's conspiring against Joe and Teresa. And I'm not saying that she isn't, but it's like, are you not seeing what Louie's doing? Like, okay, girl. Louie then chimes in and says that no one's putting in any effort. There's putting all the blame on Teresa. And he also mentions that, um, so Gia was talking to her father, Joe Judice, a bit about the situation. And Joe Judice, in turn, called Louie. And he told him, you know, don't let Joe Gorgon into your marriage. You know, he'll just try to make it all about himself, cause all these issues, just kind of telling Louis what's up. And so, yeah, Louis has that information. And so, yeah, and he says that Joe Gorgon is insecure and he's just trying to meddle in their bullshit. He calls Joe trash and an animal. And Teresa says she's just very embarrassed over how Louis has been treated. Um, and Louis at this point says, we're getting married. And after that, I'm not gonna allow anyone to do this to you anymore. Not gonna allow? And again, it's like, it depends on how you see it. It's like you, because again, I'm not saying that Teresa and Joe have to be in each other's lives. Like they may have to just call it quits, but the manner in which Louis doing it is questionable. And it's like, again, if you go from, a, from the perspective of like, well, this has to happen. However it happens doesn't fucking matter. Then I get it, Louis doesn't sound like the bad guy. I'm not really taking that stance, so I'm really questioning Louis. Um, Louis in general, I'm just kind of giving him the side eye. That's just what it is. Danielle then has her mom over to her house. She's kind of venting about her um, her brand a little bit as she's going through inventory. She's like, a lot of my stuff looks really cute in person, but it doesn't really come across in pictures, basically. She's talking about she needs her own store. She's kind of going through vendors right now, but just kind of trying to build her business, you know, which um, I respect. We then proceed to kind of talk about the situation with Danielle's brother. Uh, her brother iced the mom out because um, she kind of took Danielle's side in the situation. Because remember, the brother doesn't talk to Danielle or their mother, but he still talks to their father because the, the mom and dad are divorced. So yeah, I guess the mom sided with Danielle and the brothers kind of cut them both off. And um, so yeah, she mentions that there's a baby involved now that Danielle and her mom don't even know his daughter. So. Yeah. And Danielle's mother, her only response is like, well, hopefully he sees the light and, you know, he comes around and we're able to all be a happy family again. And it's like, you're putting it all on him. And again, we don't know the whole situation. And he, it may be all on him. It may be on his wife. We don't fucking know these people. But, you know, like, uh, chances are that it's a, a mixed situation. You know, people have different roles. They, they kind of, um, add on to the issue. You know, it's not just one person most of the time. There are some times where it is, you know what I mean? Like the whole Melissa, Joe, Teresa, Louis situation. I don't think there's any one person responsible, but they're all playing their different roles in the bullshit. It, I'm assuming it's a similar situation. Like chances are, you know what I mean? And the fact that she's just like, oh, hopefully he comes around, hopefully he sees the light, rather than being like, what can I do to try to fix this relationship? Like. I don't know. And again, that's just the vibe that I got from it. Um, it's really tricky, you know, with estrangement and it's really sad, but it's a, it's a tricky situation. But again, I am a firm believer in that most of the time it's a problem. It's a dual sided problem. Not all the time, you know, because granted, I know there's some fucked up people out there. People get with, um, you know, the spouse maybe interfering, you know, I'm, I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but you know, chances are that it's, more complicated than that. We then check in with Jennifer, who's helping her brother Michael move into this new place. Uh, he's been living in Turkey because his wife Melda, her visa didn't get approved. So he like moved over there for a bit. They had a child over there, but they all moved back over to, um, I don't know if they're in New York City or if they're in New Jersey, but the area, you know, the, the, um, the general area. They moved over there. And so yeah, and Jennifer kind of hooked them up. She, um, knows the guy who owns the apartment building. They got, they got a really great rate. 
and um, she got this designer to kind of um, hook them up a bit. So Jennifer's really helping out. So she's kind of blessed to be able to do that and help her family. So good for her. Um, we then see Jennifer, she has a one-on-one -on -one with her brother and <laughs> she's been really nice to Melda at this point, but, and she's like, oh, you know, and I chose an area that has, you know, a lot of shops around here, a lot of things to do. So hopefully she can keep herself busy and not be so clingy on you. And she's kind of talking about how, oh, uh, she has to spend all kind of time with you, but you have your family, you have a business to run, like you have other things to do that don't include being on her side. And it's like, no, Jennifer, what the fuck are you doing? Like, look at the shit that she's talking about with her husband, Bill, saying, oh, you spend more time with me, more time with the kids. And now she's talking to her brother about like, oh yeah, Melda wants you to spend more time with her and the baby, but you have things to do. You have to support the family and build the business. It's like, Jennifer, do you not see the fucking, it's like, oh my God, you know what I mean? It's like, you're complaining that your, your husband doesn't spend time with you, and now you're bitching, you're calling your sister-in-law clingy because she wants to spend time with her husband. And granted, she may be, some people are clingy, but just the, 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 the irony, you know what I mean? It was the, oh my, the jokes write themselves, basically. They then proceed to talk about Jen's situation with Bill, the brother points out that, um, so they're both from traditional Turkish families, but Bill's family is very much like, oh, you know, the man uh, supports the family financially, does all the work and, you know, brings the money in, and the wife does everything else at home with the kids, everything. You know, that's just how Bill was raised. And that's basically kind of what Jennifer and Bill had going on for a little bit, but Jennifer's over it. Jennifer then says that she doesn't like having to bury shit and kind of basically not address shit with Bill because it just kind of builds on and then she'll eventually explode, you know? Um, Jennifer then says that she doesn't want to hit the point of no return. It talks about how, you know, when one person does the work of both people, it just can't sustain itself. And it's like, you're kind of getting to that point, Jennifer. You know what I mean? Like, Bill, you want to go to fucking therapy with you. Bill's telling you to go to therapy by yourself. And it's like, why don't you both go to therapy by yourselves? You know, they could both be do that and then have couples therapy every now and then. Like, what? It's... Uh... Again, I just feel like Jennifer has her blinders on. Like, I don't think they have a healthy marriage, to be honest. From from what we're seeing on the show and yeah. And she keeps talking about how Bill keeps going to the pool house to hang out. And it's like, what is he doing in the pool house? Is he just like smoking cigars? Like what, what is he doing in the pool house? Like I'm, I'm really curious about that to be honest because Jennifer just keeps talking about it. We then check in with Rachel and she and John, they talk about how the law firm in the last episode, they've begun the process of trying to reach out to Jaden's biological mother and let her know that Rachel's trying to adopt him, and they're gonna terminate her parental rights, all that shit. And I have to add that Jaden's mother has been kind of busy talking to some media outlets. So she talked to The Sun, and she was talking about how, oh, Rachel's doing it for a storyline, I haven't been served with anything. We also learned that from, from the interview that she's living in like a halfway house, serving some time, I don't even know. Um, they didn't really go into specifics. Um, but yeah, and I guess she hasn't spent any time with Jaden since he was like seven years old, maybe a little bit younger. So yeah, so it's pretty interesting. Um, in terms of the whole, oh, she's doing it for a storyline. I think that there's genuine love between Rachel and Jaden. You know what I mean? She, he's her son, she puts it, he's her mom. Like, and it's really beautiful to see, especially as someone who has step parents, you know? Um, and, you know, she's been in Jaden's life. I think she said she met him when he was, like, eight years old. Um, I don't know when she and John got married. So one could say, like, oh, well, she went about formally adopting him now because she's on the show. And that may be true, but I think that that desire to adopt, I, I feel like she would have done it either way, basically. Um, to be honest, going off of what I see, I see love there. Um, so yeah, I think it's accusing her of being like, oh, she's doing it for a storyline, and it's like, you know, she's just being like, oh, I'm on the show, why don't we go about it? Like, I could see it, you know, I get, I guess that's technically using it for a storyline. It wouldn't have happened either way, you know what I mean? I feel like it's really disgusting of her 
to be bashing Rachel when she's raising her, when she's raising Jaden. Like, she's raising your son who is not in your life and you're talking shit about her. Like, really disgusting, in my opinion. Um, they then kind of fill Jaden in on what's up about, like, the whole, the whole process. Um, and again, Jaden seems kind of concerned about, like, his biological mother coming back into his life. Because they let him know, like, they have to track your biological mother down, basically get her permission. He's like, can she come back? And I'm like, can she do that? Even though she lost custody, like, could she do that? So he, he seems kind of concerned about it, you know? Um, and yeah, so if they have a sweet conversation, ultimately, you know, we see there's some real love between Rachel and her and her son, Jaden. Um, says that he wants to be legally adopted. And um, yeah, they both get kind of emotional. Yeah, it's a really cute scene. We then get a montage of Roman getting ready for Dolores and Polly's prohibition party. Um, Frank calls Joe and Melissa, kind of fills them in on his dinner and how it went. And he brings up how Paul allegedly already bought Dolores a ring. And Melissa's like, oh my god, tonight could be an engagement, a proposal night. And Frank does not seem too thrilled with the prospects. He's like, oh, I don't, I don't know how I feel about that. It's like, oh my goodness. Like, shut up, Frank. They already made so much progress. Then here fucking Melissa goes, setting them back. It's like, shut up, Melissa. <laughs> You have your answer to worry about this party. Just wait a little bit. There's then some chit chat amongst a few different people in the group, you know, they're getting ready to talk to their husbands about the whole Joe and Teresa thing before Margaret kind of mentions that Danielle brought up Laura again at Teresa's bridal shower. They're sitting down eating. We didn't see this on camera last week, but Danielle was like, oh, like, so yeah, I'd be pissed too if my best friend of like fucking 40 years like, double-crossed me and betrayed me like that. But what did you do to make her so mad? And I think that's a valid question. But at the same time, Danielle can't be asking shit if she's not willing to offer shit about her and her brother. Like, girl, what did you do to make him that mad? You can't have just blocked him. And again, that may have been the straw that broke, that broke the camel's back, but like, girl. But yeah, I thought that was kind of fucking funny. Danielle was like, what did you do to make her that mad? Like, <laughs> Which is a legitimate question, I think, to be honest. Um, we then said we to Jennifer. She says that uh, Margaret has zero clue just how much Laura told them. Like, and she says she thinks that Margaret might be kind of sweating it, blah, blah, blah. So kind of talking shit with Margaret a little bit. Jen says that all this shit came up because Teresa asked Laura, I, like, is there, does Margaret have anything on Melissa? I need to know, because I need to know why Melissa didn't stick up for me last year. And then she'll let her know that, yes, Margaret allegedly does have some tea on Melissa. So it's pretty fucking interesting. We then see Danielle talking to her husband, Nate, about the prospect of spilling the beans to Melissa. She's like, oh, if someone were saying this stuff about me, I would want to know. Uh, but I don't want Melissa to, like, to shoot the messenger. And Nate's like, oh, well, somebody else said it. Like, you're not starting shit. Shit's already started. Like, yeah, tell her, you know, Margaret's a problem. Yeah. And it's like, Danielle gets some horrible advice from her bird mom to her fucking husband. And it's like, Danielle gets some bad advice from people. They're like, yeah, tell her. You're not starting any drama, tell her. And it's like, girl, you're not, uh, this isn't high school, bitch. You're on a national TV show. Like, oh my goodness. So yeah, let me see Teresa and Louie. They're getting ready as well. I'm chatting. Teresa says that Joe has been taking any of her calls. She's been trying to call him in the past few days, but he hasn't been calling her back. And Louis says that it's on purpose because their wedding's coming up. He gets all red instantly. He says it's fucking bullshit. Louis says that Joe and Melissa would rather see Teresa be miserable rather than being happy. Uh, Louis says that Joe is devilishly calculated and disgusting. And Louis also says, basically, I'm done being the fucking nice guy and I'm ready to fucking react. He's very red at this point. He says that he's just not going to take it anymore. Uh, Teresa doesn't really say anything and she's like, well, are you gonna talk to my brother tonight? And he makes the whole rat in the street comment, like, oh, I'd, uh, I'd much rather talk, I wanna talk to your brother as much as I wanna talk to a rat in the street. All that bullshit. Louis says that Joe feels threatened and Louis is big mad. And he even mentions, I've been nothing but nice to your brother. He's like, I even went and told him like, oh, you are the patriarch of this family, not me. And I'm kind of like, well, why the fuck did you even have to tell him that, Louis? Of course he's the patriarch of this family. Like, he's his father's son. Like, 
you aren't like that's just, just kind of weird. You know what I mean? Like Louis can be the patriarch of his. Oh, I don't know. And that's kind of weird. Again, like like Louis's whole thing of like, oh, I wear your father's pajamas to sleep at night, and it's like just weird shit to try to prove his like integrity, and it's like it's bullshit to be honest. In my in my humble opinion, Louis says he's not gonna take Joe's shit anymore, and he says that Teresa is being gaslit and manipulated, throwing these fucking words that everyone knows nowadays, just trying to be fucking oh so insightful. Uh, Louis says that he doesn't even want to see Joe at the wedding. He doesn't want him to attend the wedding. And again, it's like, okay, so the next episode where we start see Teresa crying, being like, my brother's not at the wedding. He's respecting Teresa's new man's wishes. You know what I mean? And Teresa doesn't say shit this whole time. And it's like, why aren't you speaking? Like, what? I don't know. I was really disappointed in Teresa, to be honest. Um, Louis that makes a snake pit comment, like the whole, like, Oh, if, if you saw me in a snake pit, would you pull me out? And she's like, yes, of course. I'm pulling you out of a snake pit. I'm pulling you out of a snake pit, babe. Being fucking Captain stave a Mr. Fucking Tough Guy. And it's like... But yeah, that's where this episode ends. The next episode, it'll pop off. And that's the season finale. And then we got the reunion. So thanks so much for watching. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think about the whole situation with Louie and Teresa. Again, I just think it's a whole mess. But I'm kind of sad how Louis is coming into it and really pushing it on, essentially. And granted, you know, Louis doing this may be, if this is the only way that Teresa and Joe can, like, end their drama, you know, we can see that maybe it's useful. But I'm kind of side-eyeing it, personally. Um, but yeah, again, if you like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more. Thanks again. Bye.